Hello everybody. I'll start today's video by using the macro I just did in the last video to start a new journal entry and think through today. Today I want to do some things including double check my Python 3 to, to work which is unfortunate, but that's because I'm on Tiny Core Linux right now, and they only have up to Python 2.7, I mean, uh, yeah, 2.7 in the latest repository. And uh, I did those conversions last week. I also want to put actual useful functions, no more spam and eggs. Okay, and then the next thing is I want to adjust the uh, Levinix uh, messaging. Uh, it's a virtual machine messaging for Pipulate. And uh, I'll probably be pausing a lot as I do these videos, but uh, I'm not going to bore you with this. Last week was so... Uh, overwrought with that, I'll probably make a video later on to deal with uh, get argspec, the strangeness of having to use get argspec instead of uh, the signature function from the uh, inspect library. The, uh, this is much more interesting. Uh, maybe I'll do that first. And this is interesting, but not as important to getting Pipulate ready for prime time. It's actually what's required for getting the next Linux beta out. So having settled on an actual useful function, you're in for a little mm, pseudo hacking session uh, because creating functions for Pipulate is fun. And I started a new shell over here because if I look in my uh, home directory, I do not have the Pipulate project here. So when you want to get uh, something from GitHub, if you know its name and you know the username, you can always just do git clone http s colon slash slash github.com slash username, in my case of 11, project name, in this case Pipulate. And it just drops it right there. LS, I now have a pipulate directory to go into, LS, and uh, I can actually run it from here. Now you can see these two things here I usually keep around in the same directory. I often work off of my desktop. I'm in my home directory now. It makes no difference as long as I'm not doing CSV file updates. I should always be able to do Python pipulate. But we are going to take a look at the Python version that comes up by default. Okay, I, it's actually the right one, 2.7.2. If it happened to have come up, if it happened to have come up as 3, 3.4.2, the way to change that is you probably followed my instructions earlier of editing your vim dot bash underscore profile. And you can see I edited out my alias of Python to Python 3. So it uses the default one that's built into Max, which is 2.7, which in a way will make all this Pipulate tutorial easier for Mac people because starting out on the built-in version uh, means you don't have to install Python and deal with that bash RC profile, which I have just demonstrated that I commented out Ha! Huh. Okay, so cd back into pipulate. Now I can just do python space pipulate, demonstrating that it is actually running. And I could go to a web browser now, search as over here, and go to localhost 8080, as long as I didn't change it to 8888 globally, I think I may have. Yeah, I'm going to switch over to the new way of working. It's now going to be on localhost colon 8888. Anyway, there is Pipulate running on my local machine. I can demonstrate that that is in fact the case by control Cing, doing a refresh here, page won't be there. 
Okay, Pipulate is local. Now I actually want to um, vim. Uh, I'll keep a version running. I think that's a good idea. And Command T for a new uh, tab. And here I'll vim Pipulate. And I actually want to do it slightly differently because I like to see the server stop and start each time I do an edit. So I'll make this nice and small. And then I will make this a little shorter. I'll put this under here. Uh, I don't need this room over here. This is the way to do it. Okay. That's the best compromise, so I'll let my keyboard shortcuts show here. So if I were to just go into insert mode, do a space, save, you'll actually see the restarting of the server there. And that's kind of what I want. Restart again. Good. And now, jump down, shift G, to where these uh, nonsense fill-in functions uh, that have been getting Chris Smith so impatient reside. And I believe we are going to add one called def tweets to get the tweet count of any given URL. Yay! So it will be fed a, um, a URL as its input parameter. And for now, it will return... Hooray! Just to show how readily expandable uh, this system is. This is how we insert custom functions. And you can see I have some tabs ready to show you how we're going to figure out how we do this, but we are going to uh, open a, uh, a spreadsheet, and yes, it'll be the same old one as before, one moment. Actually, I changed my mind. We'll do it from scratch. So here we are in Google Drive, and I am going to do new. Google Sheets, and now I am going to put the word URL here. I'll put my uh, friendly uh, own homepage in, MikeLev.in, my exact name, and uh, we made a function called tweets, and I put a question mark in here. And now I hit the, uh, the pipulate bookmarklet, show bookmarks bar, shift, command B, that's what I need. So um, I don't even have my pipulate uh, bookmarklet there, so I guess I do need to bring it up uh, full screen for a moment. Uh, let's see this. Localhost 8888. Going in here. Grab it for, uh, there we go. I'll have to see why that happens. Uh, but now we can go into our spreadsheet, open Pipulate to come up on top of it. You can see it gets the uh, URL pre-filled in. And we can say Pipulate it. Oh, not logged in. Remember all that login work? This is the payoff. Login with Google. No usernames or passwords are stored anywhere. This is a, not even the client secret. This is just perfect as a GitHub project for OAuth 2. So I hit Pipulate it, and it runs, and the word hooray replaces, you know, um, the question mark. And that's no more exciting than, than spam and eggs, but that's what this video is going to be about. This is about uh, how this system gets expanded so easily. And you'll see some of the pages that I have bookmarked here are the API page. Let's see, I guess I'll just leave enough of that showing that we can get back. Remember that tweet button where you can get accounts of tweets? Well, that is a high volume, high availability uh, API endpoint for Twitter. And we're going to grab that for any given URL. I did some Googling. How do you do that? Oh, uh, Stack Overflow to the rescue. So, there is this magic thing here. I'm going to copy that. 
And before I plop it into the, uh, the code here, I'm going to open another tab and I'm going to just go into Python and I'm going to just do this stuff manually so you can see how this, this works. Uh, unfortunately, there's going to be some Python 2 to 3 issues here, but we are going to uh, need to, let's see, uh, import uh, URL lib2, I believe. Import URL lib2. And now we can URL lib dot open and plug in that and then Mike Lev.in and uh, URL lib is not defined. Aren't I silly? Of course, URL lib is not defined because it's URL lib2. Here's one of the biggest rough edges of Python right now. They're fixing it in three, but you need to know when to use URL lib, URL lib2, and a variety of other things. Module has no attribute open. I might switch to the uh, response library uh, or the request library third party for Python, which takes care of a lot of this nonsense. But let's just see it with the built in stuff before I start using external libraries. Oh, there it is. Now, see the pointy brackets? That means an object came back. And that means we need to reach inside the object for what we want. So I am going to say. Uh, response object. Uh, let me just do an up arrow to the one that worked. Let me see if uh, I'm not sure the home key on these Mac keyboards. I gotta learn how to do that on these little laptop keyboard keyboards. But we want to make um, response object equals that. Okay. Now we can print response object, and we'll see that pointy bracket thing, but now it's sitting there in memory for us. Okay, now we can print that same object, but calling the read method on it. Oh, look at that! There it is. You have this uh, curly bracket at the beginning and end, which tells us it's something called JSON. And inside the JSON, you've got name value pairs, count colon 14, URL colon confirmation that it's using the URL that we asked for. So how do we reach in and get that 14? There's tons of ways, countless ways in Python. But since it's JSON, we are going to import JSON. Okay. Now we set a standard Python dictionary to the loads method of JSON. This is where it gets a little confusing, but it's a dictionary equals JSON load response object. Let's see if it works right on response object. Yeah, it did. Uh, print a dict. Hey, now that's a standard Python dictionary. You say that looks identical to a JSON object, except for the U at the beginning that stands for Unicode. Again, it's Python 2.7 versus 3. But you would be correct. Uh, native Python objects look a lot like JSON objects. That's why they convert back and forth so readily. But now I can print reaching into a dict to the, using the key called count, I should get back the value that's held where name equals count in that name value pair. What comes back? Uh, a dose. Gotta watch my spelling. That was anticlimactic. 14, yay! So now we turn that into a function uh, over here. We kind of need to remember what we did. So I know we had two imports. We import URL lib2 and JSON. 
Now I might be going back and forth just a tiny bit as I, as I check the other tab. In my other tab, I copy that, which I know is working so well. I go over here. I paste it. And I think I'm going to actually, for the sake of keeping uh, lines short, I am going to Shift D and go API equals that string, right? And now all I have to do is open API plus whatever came in as the URL. Okay. Now, this is the one that worked. Addict equals json.load response object. I can just copy that. See, this interactive interpreter console for, uh, oops, lost track of where I was, didn't I? That interactive command line thing is really nice and useful. So now we have a standard dictionary here. We don't have error checking yet, but error checking will come soon. Uh, I am going to return a dict where the key is count. So now you have a function in pipulate where you can feed a URL in, put a question mark in, go pipulate it, and drum roll please. This will be very anticlimactic if it doesn't work, but it did work. 14. Take that, Chris Smith. We will be rolling out a series of such functions to get the amount of likes a URL has in Facebook, the amount of times that URL has been shared in Facebook, uh, the amount of times a URL has been plus one in Google Plus, and that's just the social media start. There's all the SEO stuff like grabbing title tags off the page, and we're going to get all to that in turn, but I needed to get this one most useful non-spam and eggs uh, function in there so that I can save and that I can open a new tab and go git commit am take that Chris no I'm not that way well I am a little but added tweet, tweets function to get tweet counts on any given URL. Git push. Whoops. Maybe I'll make my next video how to do the SSH keys so that you don't have to keep doing a username and password on a git uh, push. Bam. GitHub, go to pipulate, go into pipulate.py, scroll to the bottom, there it is, the tweets function. And this is why pipulate is about to rapidly grow into a free tool for SEO and social media. Thanks for joining me, hope to talk to you soon, and don't forget to subscribe.